Hello, everybody. Um, my name is, is Alan, um, and my talk is, is about bringing your reality to VR. Um, so I'm going to be focusing on the VR that everybody here already more than likely has in their pocket, which is, which is a smartphone. Sometimes it's called mobile VR, sometimes it's called cardboard VR. Um, but that's that's what I'm I'm wanting to talk about. Um, so awesome. So has everybody seen one of these? Cool. Uh, so this is this is a cool thing that basically it divides your eyes up and it allows you to uh, to look at VR images. Um, uh, with your smartphone, uh, but there's always a question of how do you capture those those images. So I want to sort of talk to how you can do that really quickly um, and really cheaply using your mobile phone. So first, I just want to talk about what's good about capturing uh, uh, content with your mobile phone. Um, so uh, I have this is just a list of some of them. There's a lot more, um, but but a couple of things to focus on. Uh, mobile devices are allow you to ch look at the images that you just captured immediately. Um, you can edit directly on your phone, um, and you can share them. You can send them. You can text a photo that you take uh, with your with your cell phone to your to your parents. You can uh, uh, send it to the web. You can do a lot of things with it. Um, it's not. Quite the quality that you would get with a with a professional VR camera, but it's uh, it's it's pretty cool. Um, so the next part, the part that takes that from being just a, a, the regular mobile photo that you usually take and uh, turns it into uh, uh, VR content, is something called a uh, a fisheye lens, and specifically the super fisheye lens, um, like. The one that I have right here. It's very, it's it's pretty small. It looks like this. You guys see that? Um, costs about twenty dollars, and you can just attach it right on here. And the way that different lenses attach, there's a couple of different companies that make them. This one has a, a case that you use with it. Um, but you can, you can use your, can, your phone just like this and capture uh, uh, the, the super fisheye photos. And uh, you, can, you can look at those using the uh, using, uh, software that's available uh, for your phone. Um, so yeah, the, the things that you're going to want to have um, the, the lens itself, some sort of like tripod, some way to keep the, uh, everything sort of level and stable. Um, cause when you're wearing a headset, you don't want the video to be moving around too much. A uh, Bluetooth, uh, shutter release, um, just so that you can take photos, um, without putting your, because the, the angle of the lens is so wide. Uh, you can actually see your hand if you're holding onto your phone. So having some way to either do that remotely or um, or um, if you don't have a, a shutter release, you can actually plug in your your headphones, at least on a lot of what I'm saying might be more geared towards the iPhone because that's the phone that I have. If there's a different way that you do it for Android, uh, let me know. Um, but on the on iPhones, you can actually use the volume up control in order to uh, as a shutter release, um, which is a helpful tool. Um, and then also have a, a some sort of HMD or head mounted display so that you can view the content once you've once you've done it. Uh, the other thing is that a lot of this takes a lot of power, so just have a charging cable with you. Um, so. This is just the Skillshare part, so, so you guys sort of have an idea of what I'm talking about. Um, basically, when you're shooting, you want to have it in landscape mode. Um, if you have it, it like this, um, it'll look like it's almost right, but everybody will look kind of fatter than they should, and it's, 
just not quite right. It, the right way to do it, it uh, uh, is, is in landscape. You want to have it eye level. The, the camera sort of represents the viewer's eyes. So the closer you are to a natural eye level, the more comfortable the experience is. It doesn't have to always be a standing eye level. It can be sitting. But just be aware that that's the experience that you're trying to create. Um, if you're shooting video, uh, you want to stabilize the video. Um, and then the other really cool thing about having a, um, a Bluetooth shutter release is that you can, um, you can take candid shots, which can end up being very cool. Um, so, yeah, all right. <laughs> Um, so the next part is how to view media in VR. Um, so there's a couple apps that you can download. I won't go too in, in depth as, as far as um, how to use those apps. There's a lot, there's a lot of really cool features, um, and I'm happy to talk to you uh, afterwards. But for really good instructions on how to view this content, um, porn has become extremely, extremely good at teaching people how to use uh, these programs, the, the media viewers um, that, that already exist. Um, so Mobile VR Station is the app that I use. You can do some really, really cool things with it. You can change the, the way that the content is mapped. You can, um, you can look at panoramas. You can look at any photo on your phone, uh, any video that you have. Um, you can download stuff from the internet. Um, it's, it's a pretty, uh, uh, cool way to look at, at content. So, um, so once you have content, once you've gone out and shot content, there's, there's a, once you understand how to do it, there's a couple of really cool uses for it. Um, and that's, that's most of what I'm, what I'm wanting to talk about. Um, so one is I, I do, I'm, I'm a market researcher. That's my, my field. Um, so one is in observational research, having a, a super wide angle fisheye sort of, uh, view is really, uh, is, is really cool, but it's not super easy to view that content when you're, when you're, uh, looking at sort of a circle, um, cause it looks, it'll end up looking, you know, like this. Um, and so watching hours and hours of video like that is kind of uncomfortable. But when you put on a headset and you can actually look around and it feels natural, um, it, it's actually a really cool way to, to sort of look back at, at content. Um, and then this is, this is sort of how it looks when you're, when you're in cardboard. Um, to capture environments, if you just want to like say, this is what this room looks like. Um, and, and send that off to somebody so they sort of have a sense of where you are. Um, that can be helpful. Um, if you're shooting sort of more, um, more, doing a more serious VR shoot, um, just having a way to view what that angle is going to look like really quickly um, can be really cool. Um, you can share all this stuff through, uh, through SMS, through, through a, a tweet. Um, and actually, if you go to my Twitter account, um, which, which will come up in a second, um, I've, I've tweeted a couple of these photos so you can sort of look at how, how they actually look on your phone if you have, if you have uh, a display. Um, and an area that I'm really, really interested in is show and tell. So capturing the moments that are important to you and then being able to share those with other people and not just giving them that photo, but also being able to speak to that experience with them having the experience of actually having kind of seen what it was like to be there. Um, and then eventually, uh, with time, any photo that you take, you can look back at and, and sort of see how things were at the time. So I think about um, like my, my grandfather, uh, I would love to have seen what his bachelor pad looked like. Um, and theoretically that's, that's something that we will be able to do with any content that starts being created from now forward and look back at anything. Um, and so that's, 
that's what I mean when I say time travel. Um, but I want to sort of speak to the show and tell aspect. Uh, or these, these are a couple other uh, examples of things that you can do. I forgot I put this in here. Um, so this photo here is um, a perspective from sitting at, one, at a table um, at a focus group facility. So you can imagine having uh, people in the room. Usually you're looking like through, through that glass window. Um, here you're actually at the table with somebody um, able to sort of read their facial expressions and do a lot of things that you can't actually do when you're, you know, uh, on the other side of the, the mirror or, or looking at, at video after the fact. Um, next is, is sort of you can see, you can put somebody into sort of an automobile or in whatever sort of experience you want to create. Um, but I, I kind of want to challenge people. If you go out and you, and you, uh, start shooting in this way, um, capture experiences in places that you find endearing and then share those moments with the people that you wish could be there. Um, there's a lot of, of opportunities in virtual reality to escape. Um, but there's also a lot of opportunity to connect with people and, and um, by sharing what your experience is, um, you're, you're adding something to sort of this collection of, of what VR is and can be. Um, so uh, on Twitter, I've already hashtagged that uh, VR show and tell, and I welcome you guys to join me in making that a thing. So I d I've already tweeted out um, this photo. Uh, I, was, I was over at um, Yerba Buena Gardens the other day, um, and I, I saw some, some uh, folks doing acro yoga. Um, and so that's, that's what this is. Um, oh, that's what, that's what that one comment was. So the one thing that I will say is that when you capture video in this mode, um, at least on some phones, the image will zoom in just a little bit, so it'll be a slightly different frame. So you won't actually get the full circle. You'll get about, um, it looks a little bit more like it's, like it's filling the, uh, like it's filling the display. Um, and the, the biggest difference when you're, when you're viewing that back is that instead of looking at like the content through full dome, if you look at it as if it's a panorama, it looks, it looks pretty good. Um, but you just sort of have to know that that's a difference. Um, I've also taken some photos that like I took when I was, when I was sitting down so you can sort of see, you know, that, that I am doing this live. Um, there. yeah, so that's, that's it. Um, does anybody want to see what it looks like or yeah? Okay. Come over here. We'll do one and then um, we will move on. Yeah, great. This one will. Actually, you don't actually. from underneath. No, no. That. And then you, see, you can see it? You can, can you adjust the lenses at all? Do you know how to, they're right here. So that's right. Okay. All right, now you can just look around. 
So this the perspective seems pretty good. I feel like I can almost touch the grass. Uh, there's definitely a, a cutoff at the at the edge of edge of the screen uh, where the picture ended. But uh, the closer I am to the center, the more the 3D looks uh, pretty. You, can, yeah, you have a good idea of depth. Shh, 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 shh. Cool. You guys, um, please give Alan a round of applause for his unique perspective. Yeah.